For the last 10 years, Aston Villa have underperformed. A historically successful club in England, Villa were relegated from the Premier League in 2016 and have faced financial difficulties and failure. But something's changed. Under successful Spanish manager Unai Emery, Villa, back in the Premier League, are once again on the cusp of the elite. So, how did they turn it around? How did Aston Villa get so much better? Emery's appointment in October 2022 accelerated Villa's rise up the Premier League table, but the roots of the club's recent success stretch back further. As recently as 2019, Villa were languishing in the Championship, English football's second tier. They'd been relegated from the Premier League in 2016 and failed to earn promotion in the two subsequent seasons. Then, billionaire business partners, Nasaf Sawiris and Wes Edens, purchased a controlling stake in the club. With the new owner's investment and under the guidance of manager Dean Smith, Villa secured a return to the Premier League via the playoffs at the end of the 2018-19 season. Sawiris and Edens have sanctioned continual investment in the transfer market since taking charge. Villa spent heavily in the summer of 2019 to equip Smith with a side capable of staving off relegation. Almost £150 million was spent, with Tyrone Mings, Douglas Louise and Matt Target among the expensive new arrivals. After their primary objective of avoiding the drop was achieved on the last day of the season, the owners displayed their ambition not only with further off-season spending, this time with more than £100 million spent on the likes of Ollie Watkins, Matty Cash and Emiliano Martinez, but with the appointment of a new sporting director in Johan Langer. In addition to transfer spending, CEO Christian Perslow and the club's owners signalled Villa's push for Premier League progress through swift and at times ruthless decision-making. Villa finished the 2020-21 season in an impressive 11th place, but after a slow start to the following campaign, Smith was sacked and replaced by Steven Gerrard. And less than a year later, they dispensed with him too, when a 3-0 defeat at Fulham left Villa 17th, just three points off the bottom and with only four wins across their last 22 league matches. And even after, Unai Emery then guided the Midlands club to a 7th place finish in 22-23, structural changes were wrought. Langer was moved into a new role as Global Director of Football Development and International Academies and renowned Spanish transfer market mastermind, Monchi, who previously worked with Emery at Sevilla, was installed as President of Football Operations. Of course, Villa's record with transfers is not perfect. Philippe Coutinho, Danny Ings and the forgotten £22 million Brazilian striker Wesley are among their high-profile disappointments. But their recent rise can in part be attributed to their savvy transfer business. They employ a collaborative approach that has seen managers empowered to identify targets, so long as they have satisfied the data science criteria of Langer or Monchi. They have also managed to extract maximum value for players sold, with former captain Jack Grealish sold to Manchester City for £100 million, academy product Carney Chukwameka joining Chelsea for £20 million, and Danny Ings moving to West Ham for £12 million. And the astute signings have continued under Emery. From the arrivals of Colombian teenager John Duran and fullback Alex Moreno in January 2023 to the summer signings of defender Pau Torres, forward Musa Diabe and midfielder Yuri Tielemans, who came from Leicester on a free. And in addition to his effective incomings, Emery has improved many players who were already at the club through tailored individual instructions and one-to-one -one coaching. He encouraged Scottish playmaker John McGinn to take more time on the ball in midfield. He instructed Watkins to contain his forward runs to the width of the penalty area, rather than stretching wide. He also directed the England forward to study the movement of the world's best strikers. Watkins had scored just two goals in 14 games prior to Emery's appointment midway through the 22-23 season. He went on to score 23 in 39 over the following 12 months. And Emery utilised a mid-season trip to Dubai to spend time working with centre-backs Esri Konsa and Mings on their body positioning. He basically taught me that I know nothing about the position I play, Ming said. He's someone who takes great pride in everything he's got to teach. The manager's meticulousness extends beyond the training pitch too. He holds long and intensive post-match video debrief sessions with his squad and he reportedly studied the last 27 home matches of Europa Conference League opponents, Liga Warsaw, ahead of a September fixture. The Spanish tactician appears a fitting manager for a club whose motto is prepared. Tactically, Villa under Emery have been versatile. At times, they've shown patience in unpicking low-block defences by methodically moving the ball across the front line and breaking in with well-timed forward runs. 
they've also proven to be electric on the counter, absorbing pressure and utilizing the speed of Watkins, Diaby, and Bailey to spring rapid attacks. After September's 6-1 demolition of fellow Premier League fast risers Brighton, Watkins, who'd scored a hat-trick, alluded to Villa's invaluable versatility. They're very similar to us, he said. They take time on the ball and draw people out of position. We didn't do that today. From kick-off, we got in their faces, pressed them high, and then on the transition we killed them. That was key. We're making it hard for teams to see what we're good at, said McGinn. Heavy defeats to Newcastle and Liverpool early in the 23-24 campaign showed that Emery's approach doesn't always work. And while they made a fortress of Villa Park with a perfect home record through the first three months of the season, they have been much less impressive on their travels, where a November loss to Nottingham Forest added to the drubbings by Newcastle and Liverpool. But Villa's progress under their current ownership, and in particular since Emery's appointment, is clear. In June 2023, CEO Perslow left the club, with Emery taking full control of football matters, which was a clear vote of confidence from the club, a confidence that the players seem to share. Hopefully, we can try and disrupt that top four, top six, says John McGinn. It's not going to be easy, but why not? If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League football story that matters, TheAthletic.com puts you inside football. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.